So here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. I want your passion to be a filmmaker kind of come from a certain movie, certain performance inspired, something that was just naturally for you as a child. Yeah, I mean, growing up, we, we definitely watched a lot of movies. I have three brothers, so I think my parents kind of had to put us in front of the TV so we wouldn't fight all the time. Um, certainly never thought of it as a thing that I could pursue. I grew up in Massachusetts and everybody mm -hmm. just kind of worked blue collar jobs. You didn't really, movies were just sort of this thing that just happened magically. Um, I started playing music and stuff in high school. And I, a lot of my, the favorite bands that I would listen to, they'd all come out with like behind the scenes videos of them going on tour or just music videos and I really gravitated towards those and got a little pocket HD camera for Christmas one year and just started filming my friends the, the music we were playing and you know it was very crude editing and nothing yeah. you know real but I enjoyed filming I enjoyed putting music to film um and then I, I ended up going to school at Boston University, uh, had no idea what I was going to study and saw that they had a film course. I took it and I was like, oh, like you can you can watch a movie and like really talk about it and really dissect it and really understand why it was made and see that it was made. And that really got me excited about you know the possibilities of trying to get into this thing so I just kind of you know transferred from the uh arts and sciences school that I was in into the film school and just you know kind of crossed awesome. my fingers <laughs> yeah. what uh I I used to play drums in bands what 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 yeah. kind of music did you play and what bands did you oh, like man. you said you saw the behind the scenes stuff you know yeah I mean I listened to do you remember Drive Through Records? Did you ever listen? Oh to those yes, yes. You found all Glory, those early so November's. Good. They were like that homegrown. Was a, homegrown, yeah. yeah, man. Those guys were yeah. funny. Uh, those Drive Through DVDs were like my favorite thing that they yeah, come out with. Movie once life. God, there's so many yeah. good bands. Like something corporate started out on there. Yeah, man. <laughs> and like I still find I still find myself going back to some of those albums every now and again. It's super nostalgic. You know, it's yeah, not necessarily yeah. what I'm gonna listen to when I'm just hanging out but it's such a I don't know it's like from 13 to 17 it was like that was all that mattered so oh, yeah Very yeah cool. those <laughs> are like our bands were kind of imitations of them we did our best but I think it was more a way for us to hang out and play music absolutely so uh, well, Woe was so good it's a horror mystery thriller about a brother and sister who stumble upon their father's secret one year after his death and soon learned that the secret may not be his alone. Oh my goodness. Uh, you're also the director, also the writer. Uh, talk about the inspiration for writing this piece too. I mean, it's very unique uh, concept. I don't want to give away too much of what goes on. In it. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Well, I, I had worked with um, the DP, Michael Lincoln, and two of the actors, Adam Helferty and Ryan Katner, who play uh -huh. Charlie and Benjamin. I'd worked on a short film with them and just had a really good time. We all kind of felt like we, we gelled well and enjoyed the experience. So from there, we spoke about making another short film and I just started kind of writing down ideas. It, it started with the image of a character driving with a casket on top of their car. It sort of just came out of conversation. And it was a little more comedic. It was sort of like the uh, um, Christmas vacation scene of like the giant Christmas tree on the car. Yeah. <laughs> and like then, that. yeah. And so, it, and I think, you know, the guys that I was speaking with, they were like, yeah, that's cool. Just kind of go with it. And as I started to write, it just kind of got bigger and bigger. And the movie deals a lot with mental health. And that's something, mental health and ignoring mental health. And that's something personally that I have, I'm still dealing with and have dealt with and have seen it in my family. So, you know, Me too, I don't, man. I understand <laughs> it's, it sucks and it's tough, but it's important to talk about and think about and, and actually confront instead of ignore and avoid, which I think, you know, a lot of people learn that that's what you're supposed to do. Um, so those ideas were just in my head while I was writing, I, you know, I don't think you ever really know what you're, 
you start a script and if, if you have like the theme of what it is, you're probably, it's probably going to kind of fail. So I, I think mm -hmm. just having that image of the car and the casket, thinking about mental illness and sort of the stigma that it entails, it just sort of blended together. And I just kept writing and I would write and I would meet up with the guys and show them a version and they would give me ideas and say, you know, this part's good. This part doesn't make sense. Um, and then we, you know, we did that for like a year about, and then finally just we're like, Hey, I think we got to try to make this thing. And, and we had this, this great producer who came on kind of, kind of like right before we started. And he kept this guy, Ryan Gibson. And he kept telling me, cause I was, this is the first feature I made. So I was, you know, we had a couple like false starts and being like, ah, I don't think it's ready. Um, and Gibson kept just saying, the movie will let you know if it doesn't want to get made. And <laughs> That's good. so That's good like, like we had a script, we had actors, we had locations and things. And the days started getting closer to when the shooting was going to happen or the filming was going to happen. And it's like, nobody was telling us we couldn't do it. So we just kind of went for the plunge. Yeah, well, you mentioned location. Where, where did you actually shoot this? I mean, that, that the house alone, I think, is his own character. You know, really. <laughs> yeah, it, to it. It was... it's yeah, it's actually um, the house of the DP's wife at the time. So oh, we wow. we had seen the house and we we're like, man, this is sort of a rare house to find in Los Angeles. We know we didn't want the movie to feel like it was taking place in Los Angeles. It definitely, you know, there's. Um, license plates and you see a couple of palm trees so it's not fully hidden but we we kind of wanted it to take place anywhere and that house mm -hmm. just felt very like american and lived in and old and sort of had this kind of haunting feeling to it just on its own mm -hmm. so for us um our production designer elizabeth Godar, she's she's amazing and for her she you know her job was really to like remove a lot of stuff um, because it was a lived in house that we essentially took over for like a week and had to house the people that were living there in our apartments, get Airbnbs and stuff so we could sort of take the place over. But oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it did an but amazing that, job. I mean, it really nice. looked like it's been like run down for a long time. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it was a really beautiful piece of architecture. And just like the yeah, we, we sort of saw the place and designed the movie around that location. And yeah. luckily we were able to film there. Uh, one thing I always love focusing on, and especially in horror movies, is the sound design, and it was so good in this movie. Um, I especially love the mix of the score and that telephone ringing constantly. It just was so intense in so many different scenes in this movie. Uh, who is your sound designer, and I guess how, how did you give directions in making this piece so beautiful? Yeah, um, sound designer was a, a very close friend of mine, Jimmy Welsh, who I've known since like the third grade. We actually played in those kind of crappy bands together. Oh, um, nice, yeah. And he's, yeah, and he's kind of a music producer wizard and does some really beautiful work uh, producing a lot of our friends' music. He had never done a feature before. We've done some shorts together, but like he had never taken on a feature. And he's just, he's such a good friend and so down to just like, spend the time and lock ourselves in in a room and just try to figure this stuff out so you know we knew we wanted the sound design to try to mimic how our main character charlie was feeling which is claustrophobic and isolated and just like sort of everybody trying to to breach his comfort zone at every second so we just tried to think of you know what are the things around you that can sort of have rhythm and if if that rhythm is happening enough it's going to kind of drive you mad so it's like coffee dripping water water dripping the phone all these things that um we just kind of tried to layer on top of each other to, yeah, to make even like the, uneasy. The, i guess it was a wasp or i don't know if there was bees or not but that yeah was, yeah like, wasp. That to it, you know? yeah 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 and you know punch trunk love is a movie that we all really love and it's it's a very different movie than this but the sound design of that movie and the anxiety of it was yes. just like you we watch that movie and you're just like oh my gosh this is so stressful but the character isn't like doing much he's like working but you're still just like this, like something awful is going to happen. So that that film and that the sound design in that movie in particular definitely inspired us. 
Very cool. Well, the movie comes out June 15th on digital and DVD. Which is today. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's <laughs> Which today. Which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you work on these things for, I don't know, two years or so. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, it's today. Cool. <laughs> wow. Your, your baby's finally come to life. So, yeah, mm -hmm. everyone check it out. And uh, anything else in the works you're allowed to talk about before I let you go? Um, I mean, working on more, working on another script um, that will hopefully bring a lot of the same people together you know not necessarily the same characters but a lot of the same actors and I my goal is to try to get that one filming by next summer uh in Massachusetts where I grew up trying to do oh, something awesome yeah so that's the hope is to kind of try to get a group of people to go and live in Massachusetts for like a month so still writing still gotcha figuring that all out uh are you on social media we can follow your journey like which one do you like prefer you know? yeah instagram is probably where i'm, I'm most active and that's just mm -hmm. at matt goodhue uh g-o-o-d-h-u-e and then the film we have an instagram page just at whoa movie so you know we're, we're gonna post behind the scenes pictures and we've got like the trailer and stuff on there if you want to check it out and follow it and if you like the movie definitely reach out let us know uh, if you do letterbox or any of that stuff, it'd be awesome to just hear what people think. Very cool. Well, congratulations on the movie, man, and keep up amazing work, all right? Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it.